Hi, I'm Ken Woods. The music you were just listening to was the beginning of the trio section of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, a work I'm conducting this weekend with the English Symphony Orchestra. Once upon a time, there was a chap named Abbe Maximilian Stadler, who was a contemporary of Mozart and Beethoven. His lifespan sort of bracketed their careers and a good friend to both of them, influential composer and musician in Vienna. And not long after the premiere of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, Stadler reported that the music you've just heard, the beginning of the trio section, was actually a hymn sung by pilgrims in southern Austria. And that puts an interesting slant on this whole middle section of the piece, one that I find really fascinating. Here's music that has an implication of reverence, of expectation, of hope, and uh, what Beethoven does after what you've just heard is fascinating. He goes on continuing the melodic writing in this very reverent style with a beautiful long breathed melody in the winds and takes the figure that you've just heard and puts it in the bottom of the orchestra in the second horn in something that really, for all intents and purposes, ends up sounding a bit like a musical fart joke. So we have this mixture of mischief and reverence, of solemnity and silliness that permeates this section of the piece, and both states of being seem to be fully expressed. So it rises to a sort of apotheosis of deep religious feeling at the same time that the music gets incredibly silly. And as the section winds down, there's this haunting, genuinely touching chorale in the strings, accompanied by the belching, burping, farting horn right to the very end. People always think of uh, Charles Ives as sort of the first composer who was really able to articulate a multitude of emotional states at the same time in a single musical moment. But Beethoven was on the case many decades before, as was Haydn for that matter. And uh, that's part of what makes these pieces so endlessly fascinating, because you can never pin down with any certainty exactly what Beethoven wanted you to be thinking. He obviously wanted you to be processing all sorts of cognitively dissonant ideas at the same time, and that's what makes it great music. <laughs>